Hello, happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. There we go. Hey, hey everyone, thanks for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are going to continue on the back of the granny square quilt tonight. We started this a couple days ago. Uh, all right, so thanks again. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for crafters. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so we've been working on the granny square quilt for a while. We're down to making the back, and we have been just kind of cutting and sewing things together, chopping it up, uh, trying to just kind of willy-nilly get this to work, basically. Uh, so we've, we've cut the rows out again and we are now kind of sewing them back together so it's looking more and more patchworky I actually am kind of liking it so we have a few more rows to add to this I have one more idea that we might do for this but that won't that won't happen today <laughs> but we'll talk about it so all right thank you guys let's get going okay hello hello everyone so thanks again for the lovely birthday wishes last night we took a break from this to do like a little birthday project for myself basically just to get a project done we finished our large our kind of wide zipper pouch this is the pouch that we extended the zipper we made the zipper bigger than um what it was we didn't really make the zipper bigger the zipper is still like a nine inch zipper but we extended the ends a little bit so we could make a bigger bigger pouch and we even put a little little pocket in there too so that was fun taking a little break to do that last night and this is where we got on on this it's looking uh it's coming together I actually I think uh it was these long strips and I don't know I wasn't quite feeling it so we cut it up again and it was also really tall I wanted it more square so we cross cut it all of our long strips and then sewed them like mixed them up a little bit and then sewed them back together we actually um sewed the ends together and undid the seam at different little parts that's why nothing's lined up anymore it's because we were moving seams around basically uh so we have four more pieces i think so we'll we'll sew those to each other uh here we go i have my iron out ready to use tonight and uh, yeah, I think let's just pop these together and then we'll put this on the, on the other part of the quilt. I've been kind of pressing as I go. Uh, so that's been kind of nice. And uh, we'll just end up seeing what this looks like. It's gonna be crazy. So my idea though is I was thinking that we could Oh, Linda says maybe the maybe the color you are missing is white. So this this brings that in. So that is that is uh, you are thinking the same way I'm thinking. So uh, I thought maybe we even chop this up again. Uh, but I was thinking we we could cut this into like twelve inch squares. So. We have all this, we have this big piece now. We could cut it down into squares. Actually, I'm gonna start with this guy. And then kind of mimic a granny square block on the back of this. So we could cut this into nine squares. Like we could put basically one of these blocks in the middle, then maybe teal, solid teal around it or solid white, like we could go solid white around it, and then uh, more of these squares around, and then teal on the outside, and then teal like for the rest of it. So we could sort of actually mimic a small granny square, well, like a very large granny square, but like not as many pieces, like a smaller uh, amount of pieces. Granny square on the back of this, oh, that was weird. There we go. Um, so what we would be doing by that is we'd be breaking up all this busyness even more by chopping it into little squares. And we'd be able to bring in some of that white uh, and bring in bring in the teal again. I mean, I, I was planning on bringing in the teal, but I don't know. It was either, I originally was thinking I'd just put a border around this. But when I laid it out on the floor uh, yesterday, I'm like, this is kind of 
we could probably get some squares out of here and mimic that granny square. So I think that is my plan. I have to actually measure, you know, what kind of fabric I got left here. Uh, so we'll probably just, if, if we go that route, which, I th which I'm leaning towards, um, I have to measure this and then see how many of these squares we would need and then figure out, you know, how I can get that out of the piece that we have. And that'll probably de determine the size of our squares because those squares got to be the same for the white and the teal. But yeah, I think this is going to bring it together. Uh, I think I think definitely having that white is going to be helpful. Yeah, and it's going to break up this busyness even more, and, and, and it is busy, so. Which isn't a bad thing, but it's just missing missing some of the zhuzh uh, that the front has, I think. So uh, um, I think we'll be making it simpler feeling, more, yeah, just like more contained, like how the front is but we still get to have these crazy blocks in it that will now be square. Um, kind of, yeah, mimicking the front. So it'll be like a big, simple granny square on the back using up a lot of the old fabric from it. So I think that's kind of neat. So it's honoring the scraps, I think, but also honoring the original like granny square look and feel and design and, and color so I think I think that's the plan I'm trying to convince myself out loud <laughs> with, with you guys but I, I think I, I think I'm gonna like that all right that was a kind of a wavy seam but it's not gonna matter all right let's press this Oh, Colleen. Um, yes, I, I'm hoping uh, the gifts went out today, so I'm hoping you guys like them. Oh, speaking of, um, well, I don't know. I guess nothing, but this reminded me of it. Uh, so if you guys caught the email today, uh, we are going to be stitching the raccoon sampler. So uh, uh, I know a lot of you got the raccoon sampler. It is totally free how did I do this I think I flipped it this way and then pressed upwards yeah so the stitch sampler is is free and it actually comes with uh, 14 days of stitching so you'll get 14 emails with a stitch for for each day so you can try it out um, so you'll, you'll get those that's that's also free uh, there is a kit available, so uh, uh, I think there was a link to that in the post, in the um, newsletter. So anyway, the last week in July, and I think we're going to actually bleed over into, into August, uh, is going to be stitching the raccoon. So we'll go through each of the 14 stitches. And, uh, and then we'll stitch the whole raccoon as well. So we'll, we'll probably stitch a few stitches, like learn a few. And I know uh, if you've been here with me for a while, I know a lot of you might know some of these stitches, but we're gonna, we're gonna go through all the stitches. We'll go through a few and then stitch them in the actual raccoon uh, piece. And then we'll learn some more and stitch some more on the raccoon. So I think we're gonna be going back and forth with it a little bit. You know what? I just realized I did not press these beforehand, and that's why they're so weird. I just sewed them together. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully this actually fits with the other one. I'm like, why are my seams, like, so bloopy? It's because I did not press the original seam. Oh, well. Hopefully it's not too shrunken down like we're able to sew it to the other guys yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go over it again just to make sure it's as flat as I can get it. Oh, Colleen says, I'm so looking forward to doing it with you. Yeah, I think it's gonna be super duper fun. Uh, I'm pretty positive it's gonna take more than the week. Uh, I've, it took me eight hours, I think, to stitch. I mean, I was filming, so I was doing other stuff too, I suppose, but I don't know, I was pretty, pretty diligently stitching it. So it's going to take 
a few more hours, I believe, than our one week will get us. But um, we'll just finish. We'll go until we finish it. Uh, Tracy's asking, how much bigger than the top do you make your back? Um, okay, so it, de it, it depends. I usually try and make the back of my quilt. Oh, man. I don't have a hard set rule, but I, I try and be at least like around three inches bigger all the way around. So that's more like six inches. Sometimes I'll just get it down to like four inches bigger, which is two inches on all the sides. However, if your plan is to long arm quilt it, um, or if you're dealing with, well, let's, let's do the one thing first. If you are planning on, a, on long arm quilting it or sending it off to a quilter, they will most likely want a whole lot more than that on the edges. Sometimes eight inches all the way around, so like 16 more inches. Uh, it'll depend on, on um, the quilter that you go with, so make sure um, if you have that, if you know that beforehand, um, be sure to ask them so they will tell you how much extra. Uh, and in that case, like if, if I was going to do that for this, I would just put like a lot of extra blue all the way around, all the way around it. Um, if you're doing, if you're working a project and you know the front is really stretchy, like as you pin it, it might stretch out a little bit, um, then you might want a little bit more as well. But I try and, I mean, I kind of skimp on it. I, I just go kind of like two inches all the way around. It's probably more like three. Um, cause if you, when you start pinning, if you start pinning from the middle and just like smoothing it all out, sometimes things will shift a little bit or the front will get a little bit bigger. And that's why you, you want the extra, you're not going to want to pin the whole thing and then be off by like an inch on the back. Ugh, God, that would not be fun. Okay. So we've pressed this, like I said, I should have pressed, um, should have pressed it before. I kind of think I'm going to set this aside and then do these two and then sew this group of four together before sewing it to the bigger one. Because I think it's just going to be annoying to sew on the other one, but I kind of want to keep going sewing, sewing one to the other. Yeah. I'm just going to do that. Let's just stick to what I was doing yesterday. I'm going to sew this grouping right to the big one right away. So I don't really know what was the top and bottom on this. Uh, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Let's see what happens if we turn it this way. Get some of these weird pinks on pinks. Oh, I, I'm pretty, I think that was the bottom now that I'm thinking about it. So we're kind of trading off these pinks and I guess we did it the whole time. We kind of traded off a pink section and a green section. Well, actually, maybe we did kind of double it up. I don't know what we did. Let's just go here. The end. Okay, so I'm going to fold this up this way and um, get these seams together. And I think this is the one I might have tore a hole in. Yeah, so I'm going to extend this a little farther. There we go. Come here. All right. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't... Let's see, if I didn't get the kit, would you suggest using stick and stitch or trace? Um, hmm. You really could do either. Um, would you use stick and stitch or trace? So I know some people actually like tracing. My mom says that she kind of likes the tracing part. <laughs> which I just don't understand. Uh, I, I just, I am not a huge fan of the tracing part. 
Um, so, I, if it was me, I guess I would go with the stick and stitch, because you can just print, I mean, okay, the stick and stitch also assumes you have a, a printer, I suppose. So, when I just want to start quickly, and uh, um, there's a lot going on with the pattern, and I don't want to trace, so if all that, if those are all factors, then I will use stick and stitch on my printer at home here. If you don't have a printer, I would just trace it. Or if you don't want to, um, deal with having to get it wet afterwards, I would um, maybe trace it as well. Uh, tracing it will will take some time. It is it is um, there's a lot going on with it. And also, if you are tracing it or using the stick and stitch, when you're done, you might want to take a like a micron pen and write the names of the stitches. So the stitches on the kit are printed on there. If you get it wet. They will fade a lot, but they won't go away. Uh, the lines, they're like semi-permanent. They will fade a lot if, if you get, get it wet. Um, but you should still be able to read the text. Otherwise, you can um, write, write it afterwards with the marker. So you can remember the stitch names and stuff. So I don't know, I guess I don't really have a real good answer for you. It's kind of how I feel in the moment. Do I really want to trace this for, you know, half hour? Or do I want to just print it out and get started? Uh, so you'll be able to see the stitch, like feel the stitches on the fabric and, and see what it looks like on the fabric right away if you trace. Because with the stick and stitch, uh, you'll have to, you'll be stitching through it. So you won't really know what it looks like on the fabric till later. If you were doing it on a darker fabric, which would be kind of cool, um, then then I'd use the stick and stitch. That'd be the easiest way. I don't know if that answers your question. I'm just kind of talking around in a circle about the boat about both. I'm not sure which one I'd go with. They're both totally valid options, though. Oh yeah. Um, a light box, you're right, a light box would be helpful for tracing as well. But not totally necessary. Uh, if you use a light colored fabric, you should be able to see through that just fine. I would tape down to your surface, like whether it's a light table or, you know, you can do it on a window too. That works really, really well. I would tape with like some painter's tape the pattern uh, to the, to your surface, to like the light table or the window, and then tape your fabric up, and then trace it. Then, then things won't be moving around. I guess having the PDF also assumes that you can print the pattern out there. Yeah, I think both are both are good options. I know some people have traced straight from their iPad. I've, I've tried that before and have had okay results. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, though. Okay, I'm going to flip this around, I think. Yeah, and then flip these upward. Okay. Talking myself through through this again. Okay, I'm ready. Let's press these upward. I'm clearly not worrying about seam direction. Some of these are crazy. Are all these seams going to make it hard to quilt? Uh, Lenore's asking me that. Uh, yep, I think it might. <laughs> uh, so, uh, something I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, have in the back of my head. 
Uh, I don't really have a solution for that right now. And it's not even the back. I mean, yes, we're doing a, a ton of seams in the back here, but the front, all those, all those um, little bits have, all those um, blocks have so many seams in. Um, so that's gonna add just a ton of bulk. Uh, I am still theoretically gonna attempt the quilting that was suggested in the pattern. So that there's quite ornate quilting to this. Um, and I kind of want to still give it a try. But man, that's, that might, I mean, we might have a lot of seams th that we're dealing with for that. But I don't know, I think I might just still do it anyway, just to challenge myself. But yeah, I think, I think my things, my, I think we might be, the needle might want to be popping around kind of a lot. Yeah, I don't know. If we go straight through where there's like six layers of fabric, eh, we might have a needle break here and there. Or some bloopy areas. But uh, where, where it just shifts away from the from the bulk, the needle just wants to slip, uh, slip, shift away from the from the bulk. Yeah, it, there could be issues. And I mean, we're we're doing this back pretty wonky, so I'm sure some fabric stretching different than others, and it's all at weird angles and stuff too. Bubbly, probably in some places. Huh, so there'll be challenges. Oh, Patty says I like the fun back. Yeah, I, I think I'm excited to actually maybe chop that up into the smaller blocks, kind of like how we were talking at the beginning. All right, so that's, we're actually, I wonder if we're getting close to square here. We might be. I think we're actually gonna be a little bit longer than square, which is totally fine. I was expecting, expecting that, because it was very long. So now we're just, slight like a couple inches shorter so that actually may, might fare well for us cutting blocks like cutting this up to mimic a granny square okay now now let's press this this is where i went wrong on the on the last one. Oh, nolene says i'm sure it'll be fine uh for the quilting i hope so <laughs> it is i am definitely gonna be challenging myself i always like some like objective with which eat with each thing so the quilting on this particular one is going to be a challenge. I'm going to use the design that was um, in the original pattern, like the suggested quilting. And it's there's a lot. Like there's circles and feather bloops and uh, I don't know the names for all of them. But uh, things I have not done before. A lot of focus on the border. Uh, I do think we might be tracing all of the squares first. So I think it might be like a lot of straight line stitching first. So I think that's good. That will secure everything in place. I mean, it's gonna be a ton of work because uh, we're basically quilting it twice. We're gonna outline the whole thing and then go back and um, stitch everything else. And then, you know, do a border and everything yet. I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> Actually, now that I think of it, I'm wondering if I should, uh, invest in some thread but I don't know maybe we'll just use up all these oranges or these light um, I think we kind of picked some of this orange for the quilting quilting thread we'll have to look at that again but I got a few things of orange slightly different but maybe we'll just use those up kind of like the idea of just using what I have one of these days I'll use it all up slow motion recycling <laughs> use it all up and then I want to get like a nice cone of like a color that I'll use just all the time, just like a nice neutral color. But I want to use up what I got first, I guess. All right, now we're actually <laughs> pressed. I did not do that earlier. Okay, and I think we had this guy up here. So I think this will be kind of the top. And uh, yeah, let's sew these two together and we'll get this on uh, the rest of it and kind of see what we got here. I'll kind of draw out maybe what I what I was thinking. So um, eh, I don't know if I have paper around here. We'll see what I got. 
Um, there we go. But yeah, so if you missed it earlier, I, I'm thinking of making, of cutting up this big block even more into smaller squares. Not small squares, but like, I don't know, 12 inch squares, let's say. I don't know quite for sure yet, but let's call them around 12 inch squares. And then um, cutting some white fabric that are 12 inch squares and all that teal fabric into 12 inch squares and kind of mimicking a granny square, a large granny square block on the back. Not with as many layer, like, you know, rings around it of, of color, but uh, just get the to get the impression of that. So might draw that out when we're done here, because I think we're going to be done with this pretty soon. Just got to press this, and then we'll sew it to the big group. Give that a press, and uh, yeah. We've re-sewn our chunks of fabric together again, then. <laughs> Just to cut it back up again. Well, that's been kind of fun. Different way of sewing, uh, without a plan, really. Coming up with ideas as we go. Perfect for playing around with the back of a quilt, I think. I've been actually really, really enjoying making all these kind of, Im like, most of my quilts that I've been doing lately here, which lately means the last, past few years, really, right? Because they're quilts and they take forever. But I've been doing these improv pieced, in some way, backs of quilts since, like, the first Splendid Sampler. Uh, and it has been so fun. And they look, the backs of the quilts look so cool. Um... Uh, like as quilts like you can flip them over to the back and it still looks like an interesting quilt so I love how the fronts of all these quilts are really um, orderly <laughs> let's call it ordered uh, there's smaller blocks or it's a specific pattern like the chevron quilt it's all very ordered and then the back since we've been doing all these improv piecing it, it's just kind of all all over the place and like kind of artsy and other decision making processes happening and it's just the two layers of that I think it's just really fun so you can decide like when you're covering the bed and eh, do I want this more like clean ordered design or do I want this more kind of out there graphic uh, whatever looking looking design All right, I I missed uh, a little bit of the conversation here, so I'm not I'm not sure what you guys are. Uh, Patty, were you needing help with something? Oh, front traditional, then crazy things on the back. Yep, I I like that. Have you tried ruler work? I'm taking class right now. It's fun. Uh, Kathy, I have the teeniest bit, so I do have a foot a presser foot um, that works for ruler work. Um, what did we do? We did, we used that a lot on something. Some quilt. Uh, so I don't, I have um, some rounded rulers so I, I can make, um, oh maybe it was the, maybe it's the current uh, Splendid Sampler 2, we were doing some ruler work. I have uh, some rulers to make like scalloped edges and circles, so we, we tested those out, and that was kind of fun. Um, I have not, definitely not mastered doing the straight lines with, with the ruler on my, just my, my home machine here. Um, that I found kind of difficult because I gotta keep moving. <laughs> I gotta keep moving up on, on the machine. So if I'm doing a long line, I gotta shift everything and then try and get back on that line. So I haven't been very good at that, um, but we've we've done a little bit. It's kind of on my list. I want to do more, more with that, for sure. 
I'm just not comfortable with it yet. So that to me means, okay, stuff I still want to learn here. But we've done a little bit of it. I think I have enough of the tools. I don't have a good straight, well, yeah, I guess some of these template or some of these little rounded rulers have a straight edge on the other side. So I could use those for small like ruler work. Yeah, maybe we'll have to play around with that some more for sure. Okay, bloop. Let's uh, let's uh, sew this to the rest. Ooh, I didn't put which is up and down on this again. I think that's the bottom. Yeah, I think right here. So we kind of are getting all these squirrels together. Oh, that's that's um lining up there though. I don't know if I want that. So we could either go like this. Maybe that's nice. Or we can flip it around. And go like so. But then I feel like we're going like stripes maybe. Okay, I'm just gonna go like this. Let's just do it. Too much thinking. All right, I'm gonna flip this up. Whoa, okay, getting tangled. All right, so I'm gonna sew this last line here. We'll press it and we will have uh, sewn back our pieces together again. Sewn our pieces back together again. Yeah, my, uh, Lenore says I think mine will go to a long arm quilter. So, um, then, uh, uh, definitely ask them how wide they want their, or how much extra they want for the, for the, um, back. My mom got hers, uh, quilted by a long arm quilter for the first time. And I think it turned out really nice. She just got, a, like, an all over meander like a all over like kind of wiggle it's it's kind of like what my mom actually likes doing for quilts herself but she didn't have to do it and it got done magically so i think that was a big benefit of doing it that way uh that's that's uh was her first time getting it done by a long arm quilter so that was i think a neat experience this shifting around this would be I guess it'd be easier if I used the gloves but now I'm on the last seam I forgot to do that and my extension table and we'll get both of those going once I'm quilting this for real I hear ya. Patty says I put too much work on making the top to mess it up with my efforts at free motion quilting. Yeah. That's, uh, that's why on, like, the first, the first, um, Splendid Sampler, I just did, like, straight line stitching. I didn't do any free motion quilting at all. I, I didn't know how to do it at all at that point. Um, that's why I did that whole project. Just, um, the, the, um, the, Charming Chevron's quilt. I did that entire process, or that entire quilt, from the beginning knowing that, all right, I'm gonna learn how to quilt on this. So uh, each Chevron, you can see like, theoretically the progress of my free motion quilting until the, the bottom stripe, the bottom like Chevron row where I'm getting my bearings a little bit by then. So it, it, it was um, a quilt that I knew was going to be crazy because the quilting was going to be horrible at the beginning with the hope that it was going to get better. 
So yeah, if you do not want that for your uh, granny square quilt, that I totally understand that for sure. And nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, let me get situated here. All right. I think like so. Ugh. Starting to get big and floppy. It's hard to it's at that hard to work with state. I don't like when the quilts get this big. I like it, but it just gets harder and harder to manage in my small little space here. Oops, let's just open that. Work on it. Alright, so this is gonna be my last little pressing of the night. We'll see what it turned out as and then I'll just I'll kind of draw out if I don't if I can't find paper I'll just draw out on some fabric uh, what I'm thinking of for for this um, thinking of chopping this up again which is crazy I know but I, I think I think I'm finally gonna get to the spot that I want to be with the back of this by cutting it up one more time so we're gonna see um, all right, shimmy sham over here some more. Okay, one more will do it. It'll be good enough. But whatever, I, I'm not going to press this again before cutting out squares or whatever. This is it for the pressing, I think. It's too annoying, and I think it's actually looking pretty decent. Ooh, that is a weird little seam there, though. It is what it is. And our edges are all are all jaggedy because I just I didn't line them up. I didn't take the two ends and match them and then put it back together. I just sewed, which can add some wobble to the seams and stuff, but this is all kind of crazy anyway. All right, this is looking fun. So I will, I'll hold this up um, when we're, when we're done here tonight. Uh, but right now, um, I want to kind of show you what I was thinking for, um, for this. And you know what, I think I have some scrap fabric here <laughs> a long strip of scrap fabric so I'm gonna just draw on here kind of what I was thinking so I'm gonna scoot you down so I was thinking of chopping this up into squares and uh, so we would do like a, a square and these would be large squares like 12 inch squares or something All right, I'm gonna draw this a little bit bigger so um, this would be like teal or something in the middle so let's just draw this as teal so this is like our pretty teal color that we've used in the front of the quilt our main color and then I was thinking we'd you know do the squares around it um, as as white or not not white white but like one of these patterns or one of these white ish fabrics kind of like how you know like this penmanship paper is you know, white, but it's got a pattern still. So we do that around the outside like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. So then these would be our, would be this chopped up. So that's eight. sketch the design so near 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 <laughs> this is my impression of this uh pattern sort of thing that we got going on here so that re represents <laughs> crazy pattern land here just kind of scribbling So 
that would be on the outside of, of this. It would actually be much darker contrast against the white, I think. Okay, so it'd be something like that, and then the rest would be that teal. So and theoretically, maybe, I mean, I don't know how this big this would be, but let's say that this is the rest of the quilt. We would construct it by um, putting teal here and here. We could actually, well, we'll probably do it with three pieces, but we could do it a rectangle. And then we'd throw a border of that teal all the way around as well. Um, so I'm thinking that is our game plan. Uh, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So somehow I want to get like eight pieces out of here. which I'm thinking should be pretty easy, and I'm thinking we'll have some left over. We could actually, if we have some left over, we could do like a corner with it, maybe too. That'd be kind of fun. This is like a full awesome crazy quilt on the, on the back here. So I don't know, something like, something like so. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this at all, um, but I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's sort of my plan. Now, man, now that, that made this look like super duper refined all of a sudden, I think. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is actually measure measure this and see, you know, if I, if I wanted to for sure get eight squares out of it, how would I do that? I suppose I can make this by strip piecing too, like how we did the front, but I think I'm gonna just pretend I just am sewing squares together and just, be okay with that just do that so um, like I'll do like rows like five you know five rows that are five across I think I'll just go go like that that'll be easier then I can lay it all out beforehand um, but yeah I think this will be kind of fun Ooh, I could do a bright red in the middle instead because that wouldn't that would really mimic Ooh, I'm gonna write that down uh, I'm gonna write red here or really pink but I think red will be a better reminder for me. I'm gonna put a question mark there just because that question marks when I write it in my notes just mean like I have to make a decision on that. Like I'm un unsure. So that could be because we use this pinky red in the center of every single one of our blocks on the front. So that would be a cool reason um, to do it here. Uh, Colleen, I am not sure it'll be big enough, but that's why I want to, I want to see how much fabric I got here and see what are the biggest blocks I can make to get the eight that I need, right? So, um, however big they are, I mean, they might be like 20 inches big, right? So I, I'm not sure. I have to measure this, but like, what's the biggest blocks I can get out of this fabric and still get eight? That's, that's the goal. And then I'll just make all of the other pieces that big. Unless it, unless it ends up being bigger than what I need. Um, but let's say it doesn't, let's say it's still smaller than what I need. Uh, then I'm just going to put blue on the outside. We'll just do what I was originally going to do. Just put big old teal borders. So I think that's, that's kind of the plan. All right, you guys. I think... Oh, Becky says too many seams. Yeah, we will be adding even more more seams to this. That's for sure. <laughs> really kind of mucking it up for my uh, free motion uh, future here. All right. Yeah, so future self is not going to be very happy with current self as far as seams go. But I think future future self is gonna like how it looks when it's done. <laughs> and uh, bringing in that granny square aspect to the, f to the back again, and also using up scraps. I love using up scraps from the project in the back. So, all right, here's this. I'm gonna step back here. Kinda the new look of this. So it did get uh, more broken up than it used to be for sure. Uh, so I'm liking, I'm liking that, um, 
yeah, so I'm going to lay this on the floor uh, probably later tonight and um, get the sense of size of these squares. And then really we can start cutting those up tomorrow. That'd be awesome if we could get all these pieces cut up. Um, we still have Friday, so we could... Oh, Friday. Is it Finish It Friday? It's... No, Finish It Friday was last week, wasn't it? Did the first end up... Yeah, last week was Finish It Friday. <laughs> Oh, July, the July-June changeover was goofy. Um, but yeah, so that means we have an, another day. We don't usually have another day to work on the granny square quilt. So uh, uh, it'd be great to cut up the blocks and start sewing them together. Like, get this, get the sense of this big uh, back and see how it goes. That'd be great. And really, at that point, um, after knowing the size of these squares, I should know how big the borders I'm going to need to make for this whole quilt too. So I should be able to figure out, calculate all the rest of the measurements I need for this. And that'd be pretty cool. So I might figure all that out tomorrow. So, all right, you guys, I know we're done a little bit early. Ooh, Lenore says fussy cut the center square if possible. Ooh, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give that a try uh, for sure. Um, yes. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks you, thanks again. Uh, thanks for the birthday wishes yesterday. And a reminder, we will be stitching the raccoon sampler, stitch sampler, the last month. So we'll be, the third week of the month, we'll be stitching the Feeling Good embroidery. That is our embroidery of the month. And then right after that, we will be starting the Stitching Raccoon, which is a free pattern. So head over to the shop and it is our free stitch sampler, uh, penguinandfish.com. I also have a link below here. We do have the kit available for that as well. So you'll want to get that soon so it can get sent out to you before, uh, before that last day of stitching. And that goes for the embroidery of the month as well. <laughs> it's going to be that time to, um, uh, that there's only like a week, a week left before we start stitching it. So, all right, have a lovely rest of your evening and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.